Hello everyone. In this session, uh, we'll deal with uh, chapter 3, uh, which is very, very interesting and very important for design point of view. In chapter 3, which is uh, physics used in HVAC. And you know this, uh, without this concepts, you cannot think to deal with this uh, designing part uh, for this HVAC, especially for the load calculation. And uh, when we deal with the fluid mechanics uh, or this say ducting, piping, all these concepts is required. So in chapter 3 physics use in hvac we'll start with the h we'll start with the heat and you see if you are dealing with the air conditioning so air conditioning the first parameter you know adding or removing the heat right so it it's, it must to understand what is heat so we'll start with the term heat then we'll discuss about the temperature and uh, the temperature scales then we'll also talk about this sensible and uh, latent heat and we'll deal with this uh, vapor compression cycle, refrigerants, loss of thermodynamics, units and conversion, all this topic in chapter three, and which is very basic and very, very important for design point of view. If you know this concept, this concept we can use at the time of designing, especially this sensible heat, latent heat, temperature, temperature scales, units, conversion are very, very important. Okay. And, uh, We'll deal with the vapor compression cycle, which is required at the time of uh, chapter four, when we deal with the classification of machines, because in all commercial and residential units, you'll find vapor compression cycle only right from this window to chill water chillers. Okay. So this is very, very important. So I know this is very basic, but uh, we cannot ignore this because uh, without this it's difficult to deal with uh, the load calculation or the designing part. So let me proceed. So here, the first term you can find is the heat. And you see, we are dealing with the air conditioning, adding or removing the heat as to maintain the required temperature for summer or winter. So first of all, you must know what is heat. And as a mechanical or as an engineer, I believe you already know the heat. But my responsibility is to explain this quickly because uh, as I said, this course, what we design is from basic to the advanced level. So you know about this terms and terminology, but... Uh, in this session, we'll try to understand this terms and terminology for application point of view. Okay, not just theoretical. We'll try to understand for application point of view. Then only you can uh, involve in the designing because concept is very, very important. So here on screen, heat is what? In short, I can say heat is a form of energy. And temperature is what? Temperature and heat both are same or different? Different. Yes, heat is a form of energy. Yes, uh, so heat is a form of energy and temperature is the intensity of that energy. Yes, okay, sir. so with the temperature, we can find out the rate of heat transfer. But the the content of heat, the, the content of that energy is a heat. Okay, or else the heat we can also call in technical term as enthalpy, right? Heat content of the body. So what exactly heat? You can find out here on screen. Heat is a form of energy transfer that occur between the substance with a different temperature and you know this uh, whenever there is a temperature difference then only the heat will transfer now if the temperature if it is same in uh, in both the bodies and if it is physically connected that will attain what thermal equilibrium and will not transfer the heat so heat will transfer only when there is a temperature difference if there is no temperature difference there will no heat transfer because both the body will attain thermal equilibrium and this term also will use at the time of load calculation especially at the time of learning heat gain through partition floor and ceiling because heat gain through partition means between the two rooms if the two rooms with the same temperature it means there will be no heat transfer okay so just i'm trying to relate these terms uh, with the load calculation so that with the, when we deal with the load calculation this will be useful or this will be helpful for us next heat can be transferred through conduction convection and radiation so i believe you know what is conduction convection radiation if you are electrical any even you see even electrical engineers also know this basics but still if you have confusion don't worry we have a topic in the next page only about this conduction convection and radiation so the heat can be transferred with the different modes this we can call as a different modes of heat transfer it can be conduction convection or radiation and it's a fundamental concept of in thermodynamics and you know what is thermodynamics responsible for changing the temperature of object and can be measured in units like btu so as an engineer you know calorie joules kilojoules etc what you learn in the engineering but this term btu may be new for many those who are new to this field 
those who already in the field they know this com this term is very commonly used in actual practice btu btu is what in short we used to call btu it's a british it's thermal unit. unit right so what is btu and how to understand this that also we'll discuss let me proceed so you see heat always transfer from high temperature to excuse me the low temperature no? according to which law this heat transfer from high temperature to lower temperature according to which law or which thermodynamic law first law thermodynamic. anymore okay so oh, according to second law second anyhow law. we have this uh, loss of thermodynamics also first and second law in this chapter three only we'll discuss before dealing with the vapor compression cycle okay because this this basics is very very important so try to understand the applications out of this and you see this heat transfer from high temperature to low, low, low temperature this applicable at the time of learning vapor compression cycle because in vapor compression cycle you'll find condenser and evaporator so in condenser heat will reject and in evaporator heat will extract and because of this uh, this nature of the heat only okay so by nature heat for always flow from high temperature to the low temperature right everyone aware of this we'll discuss more about this in second law of thermodynamics in chapter three only next as i said the unit of heat is a BTU commonly in actual practice. It can be joules, it can be calories, but most commonly in actual practice. This is actual practice means I'm talking about for this load calculation point of view. We're using this term BTU. So if you talk about the units of measurement, you know, SI units or English also known as Imperial. Commonly, we are using this two uh, measurement system in actual practice, SI. And metric is a part of SI and English or Imperial. So this BTU is a unit belongs to English system and in SI we can use joules okay so what is exactly BTU we'll try to understand because at the time of load calculation when we extract the heat gain through all the possible sources the end result is going to be in BTU per hour so we must know how much BTU per hour is adding for a particular space then only we can able to select the required capacity cooling unit or in case of uh, heating also we must know at what rate the heat is rejecting from the space again that we are calculating in terms of btu if we are dealing with english system so what exactly btu is in case of conversion you see one joule equal to 0 0.000948 btu or one btu in terms of joules is 1055.06 joules this is our values but what exactly the btu that we'll try to understand now okay so you see even this uh, calories also will be used, which is also a part of English, not commonly, but uh, most commonly in English system, you'll find BTU. So one calorie in, in terms of joules also is given the conversion. So the conversion you need to memorize that we'll use at the download calculation. And we have a separate topic for conversions also in this chapter three. Okay. Next, we'll try to understand what is BTU and it can be asked in interview also. Very basic interview question. And even for the load calculation also, as I said, so you see BTU stands for British thermal units. It's a unit measured for energy, nothing but heat energy. And one BTU is defined. This is important. You see one BTU is defined as the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit at constant pressure. Once again, one BTU is defined as the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit at constant pressure. So what do you think? BTU is a large amount of heat or a limited amount you see one pound of water means one kg in terms of pound is what 2.2 pounds so i can say say half liter half liter of water say one pound and in order to increase one degree fahrenheit of heat fahrenheit means again it's a it's a unit for uh, temperature in english system in case of uh, si we are using degree centigrade so what is degree centigrade fahrenheit that also you'll find in the same chapter but as an engineer, you know these terms, Fahrenheit or centigrade or Kelvin, etc. So what do you think? This 1 BTU is a large amount of heat or just a limited? Limited. Yeah, because you see, 1 BTU is a heat energy which is required to increase 1 degree Fahrenheit of what? 1 pound of water. Okay. So it's a very limited amount of heat energy at constant pressure. So here, this example will help you. You see, this is very simple. 1 pound of water in a container, 1 pound of water in this uh, container here and initial temperature say 50 degree Fahrenheit for example and after this I am going to add the heat and how much heat say 1 BTU. So when you add 1 BTU of heat energy in this container which is of capacity 1 pound of water so what will happen the temperature will increase from 50 to 51 degree Fahrenheit okay. 
So 1 BTU of heat energy is responsible to increase 1 degree Fahrenheit of 1 pound of water. That's it. So in English system, we can say the specific heat of water is what? You saw like 1. Because specific heat is what? Specific heat na? For, for unit volume to raise 1 degree Fahrenheit. That is a specific heat. So here 1 BTU is what? 1 BTU is a specific heat for water to increase 1 degree Fahrenheit for 1 pound of water. So here is specific na? So we are considering a unit volume and for 1 degree Fahrenheit. So remember, this we'll use at the time of calculation. So specific heat of water in English system is 1. Right? And it's a very, very basic and important for interview point of view. So you must memorize this definition. You see, 1 BTU is the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of 1 pound of water by 1 degree Fahrenheit at constant pressure. Next, so we'll deal with one example. Here you see, simple example. So you know this, 1 degree, to increase 1 degree Fahrenheit for 1 pound of water, 1 BTU is required. Hmm. Now in this example, you see, initial, initial temperature of water says 70 degree Fahrenheit, 72 degree Fahrenheit. I'm interested to increase this to 82 degree Fahrenheit. Means how much I'm interested to increase? 10 degree Fahrenheit, right? Because the difference is 72 and 82 is 10. Na? Of what? For what? For 10 pound of water. So what do you think? How many BTUs of heat energy is required? Four options. 100. 1, 10, 100 or 1000? 100. Yes, only. I got 100. The answer, 100. What about other participants? Mm -hmm. So 100 is a correct. Why? So mass is, is, mass is ah, 10 pounds. Right. And even the degree also is 10. So 10 into 10 is what? 100 BTUs are required. In case if I consider 1 pound, then 10 it will be the correct answer. Okay. But if the here the content is a 10 pound, na, so that's the reason 100 BTUs are required. Very simple. But try to understand the concept because this will use at the time of load calculation because the time of load calculation when we deal with the heat gain through wall, heat gain through partition, floor, ceiling, ventilation, etc. That we are going to calculate in terms of BTU per hour. So you can understand, huh? This 1000, 2000, 3000, 5000 BTUs are per hour heat is entering from outside to inside through this wall or through this glass, etc. Okay. So that's the reason this basic is very, very important. Hope you got the idea online about this BTU, British Thermal Unit. Mm -hmm.